What's up everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. This week I'm going to show you one of the most common moths in Europe. Some of you may already think, oh yuck, you were expecting to see something exotic or weird. Big bird wing butterflies or moths mimicking butterflies, but nope. But let me tell you, this one's going to be really interesting. Why you ask? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you. Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. This week's drawer starts quite innocently with some rabbit moths, or I should say tussock moths, which nowadays are not their own family anymore. They're now Erebidae instead of Limantridae. But let's cut off the technical jargon, because here we see something interesting. These look like regular moths, right? These are the males of the vaporer moth, Orgia antica. Or in my native language, the Witvlak Vlinder, which means butterfly with a white patch. Yes, in my language we call most moths butterflies. Instead of moth, we say Nachtvlinder. Anyways, that's not interesting. What is interesting is that this, all these males, are the males of one of the most common tussock moth species in Europe. They can be found in suburban habitats and almost anywhere in parks and many types of habitats really. They are very polyphagous and probably eat hundreds types of plants. In my village I find them on walnuts sometimes. But the males are not what interesting. Have you seen the female of this species? These specimens here are the females of the vaporer moth. So just to make it clear, here we have the males and here we have the females of the same species. Now if we take a close look, you'll see that something is really, really... Well, I was almost going to say something is wrong with this one. But there's nothing wrong, this is what they usually look like. Now if you're very observant, you will have noticed that this is a wingless moth. Have you ever seen a moth without wings before? And this is normal, this is what they are like in nature. And there's even a, an, a, a scientific term for this. Winglessness in insect uh, is called brachypterism. Say it with me, brachypterism. And it means that when evolution decides the evolutionary roles of males and females, the role of the male in most moths is to find the female and females usually just wait for the males to arrive, pair with them and lay eggs. But in some species, these uh, sexual roles are extreme. And these females, what they basically are, is they are egg laying machines. When they hatch from their cocoon, they don't even uh, walk away from their cocoon. They just sit there all their life. They just sit still all their life and die, only waiting for a male. And after she paired with the male, she dumps all the eggs over her old cocoon, which has protective hair, so it's a safe place to lay the eggs. And then she dies. So, while these winged males are flying around, trying to find the, the scent, the smell of the pheromones of a female, they come to her and pair, and the female just lay eggs and dies. She cannot fly, she can barely walk, she only exists as a pure egg-laying machine. And this is pretty bizarre, right? Like I said, this is one of the really the most common moths in Europe. But the bizarre biology of this species is often ignored. And to me it's just so fascinating how evolution basically uh, made flightless females, wingless. And the truth is that in many moth species, females are almost wingless. For example, in the Saturnidae, the silk moths, uh, females can fly, but 
their flight is limited, they are often too heavy to fly and they only fly a little bit to sometimes find the right host plant for their eggs but they only live for one or two, two weeks anyways so they cannot be picky and they have to conserve their energy because they have no functioning mouth and cannot eat and basically starve to death so what the females do is they're basically also reduced to a sort of egg laying machine that can barely barely fly but they can still fly but just 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 this species just took the same process one step further and here we see another species it's a smaller species it's also from the genius uh, it's Orgia anticoides a related species but not the same as you can see the females are white and smaller than the big and brown Orgia antica I do not know the English name for this moth so if any Englishmen are watching tell me in the comments but yeah this is uh, drawer of the week and this is what I wanted to show you today wingless female let's try to get close-up shot of her head if we can see it can we zoom in on that come on yes there we go take a look at that body and legs she's basically just a walking stomach a walking abdomen she has just just this huge huge body and small head and small legs a pure egg producing machine that cannot walk that cannot fly that can only sit still and lay eggs and here's some, some a nice uh, update for the hardcore followers of my channel I have eggs of this moth and they are hatching so we're going to see them alive on my YouTube this year if things go well and I don't kill them but they should be easy to breed so I, I would assume that my breeding will be a success. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Hello everyone and thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. My name is Bart Coppens and I work with butterflies and moths. Both dead ones and live ones. Because I breed them in captivity. I study them, I film them, I photograph them, I research them and I volunteer in a museum collection where I'm a conservator of the butterflies and moths. Now, Drawer of the Week is my weekly series where I show you one drawer with interesting specimens from a museum and give you some interesting facts about them. If you like it, like my video, subscribe to my channel and consider joining my crowdfunding platform, Patreon. Because only with your help, my mission to educate the whole world about insects can be fulfilled. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next episode of this weekly series.